we can yeah. start with uh, sujoy's uh, presentation as well so in my case discussion the fundamental question that remains same what dr richa just spoke about so during my talk i will uh, take you through some of the slides that i already have discussed during my talk just to uh, rephrase your mind that what we have seen in in the multifocal electroretinogram so that that is the wave response that we what we see that in the field view and the retinal view so what happens basically the shape of the waveform that has to be kept in mind that that is a biphasic that wave that that consists of n1 p1 and n2 so so in in the field view what we see that that the image that waveform is completely upside down while the vertically we are analyzing but same in the opposite manner then the what whatever we are seeing that is the mapping of the uh, multifocal electroretinogram over the fundus image so it is just superimposing over the retinal surface and this 3d plot that shows that overall signal strength per unit area of retina so that in that in uh, i already have told uh, in the last talk that uh, multifocal electroretinogram waveform that looks almost same like flash electroretinogram the main difference is erg that shows the overall response and and that multifocal erg that takes the response from the particular area uh, location of the retina so here while we uh, look for this multifocal electroretinogram couple of things we should keep in mind that you have we have to focus on to the level of noise so during the test we should look for the impedance level and the level of noise and how the eyeball is moving or whether it is moving or steadily is maintained throughout the test now the scale so 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 what we have described uh, described in the previous talk also that uh, overall flash erg that shows that that scale is overall uh, that that comes around uh, that that comes in uh, microvolts and in multifocal erg as it, it is a focal response that is showing up so it is if as it is in microvolts too so so the amount of amplitude is pretty minimal so in order to amplify that and or to analyze that in more robustly from the particular rings so it is converting the that scale to the nanovolts so keep in mind again so the average response which is shown here that is in the nanovolts so as it is converted to nanovolts the waveform becomes more consistent and more robust so we can see that biphasic waveform that is n1 p1 and n2 so that that shape of the waveform that has to be kept in mind while we are looking analyzing the waveforms of that multifocal erg in particular ring so that ring consists of 5 degree 10 degree 15 degree and at last at the 20 degree so and and the level of noise whether that is correlating with the level of noise of that particular patient during the test that has to be seen also so here what we are seeing that the level of noise is pretty less less than 2 microvolts and all what we are seeing in the histogram these all are the original responses now coming to the case so what we have seen in the previous slide that is taken from a normal individual now here what we are seeing that the inter response amplitude or the waveforms are little diminished so what we have seen in the previous slide and now if we compare this i will show you the comparison but just try to understand that level of noise is within normal accepted range and the patient did not move the eyes throughout the test so it was steadiness was maintained and the level of noise was also reliable so we can rely on the test now simultaneously while we that machine itself calculates those uh, amplitudes in the nanovolts so it should be a little bigger so that we can focus on to the amplitudes and can see the how the implicit time is too so we can see that amplitude is not much robust even though that is present the shape is maintained but that amplitude is not much while we are analyzing that how much was the noise so noise level was also within the accepted range so it is not getting more than the accepted range so it is reliable and again while we are uh, we are uh, uh, getting that average of n1 p1 and n2 uh, wave amplitude for a particular ring that is also diminished so the amplitude average amplitude is also also diminished now that is the comparison so here what we can compare we can see that wave response in of particular areas over the retina so these all are diminished while we are correlating that we can see that average response even though the noise level is within normal range 
and histogram that shows also the reduction of the amplitude and overall response per ring that is from particular ring which is normal here but this is diminished here simultaneously that 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 shows that overall signal strength per unit area of of retina that is that was present in the normal multifocal electroretinogram which is abruptly present in that particular case that that is we are focusing on so now the question is how to establish that all the waveforms are reliable and acceptable or require repeat test now i will take you through a, part, a case where we can see that particular uh, bizarre looking waveforms so now th those components what i discussed in the initial slides what did we discuss that is that we must keep on to the uh, focus on to the shape whether that is maintained or not so try to uh, recapitulate again the waveform which was which is usually to be biphasic in nature that consists of n1 p1 and n2 which is completely absent none of the waveforms are taking any shape particular shape even though some of those are taking but if we correlate with the level of noise and the movement of eyes so those are not at all correlating with each other keeping in mind while we are analyzing that in the nanovolts so those scales are showing completely abrupt in nature more interestingly if we go a little down if we look at the level of noise which is ideal also correlating with this 5.1 microvolts which is more than the normal accepted range and there is nowhere that original waveform is produced so that means we do not we should not rely on this particular uh, waveforms so it is basically that basically happens because of the low signal to noise ratio so here what happens we do not have any idea what is basically response because of the increased amount of noise level now to answer the initial question now here we the, the test was advised for multifocal electroretinogram and it was uh, advised only in the right eye we have to check the impedance level of the uh, of the uh, during the test so in flash erg it should be the less than 5 kilo ohm but in multifocal erg it is it should be less than 2 kilo ohm simultaneously while electrodes are in place and patient is looking straight whether patient blinks we should not we should always counsel the patient or or uh, motivate the patient yes you are looking good in, we have few more minutes left so in that way we can at, at least avoid some sorts of artifacts fixation and steadiness is uh, is is very crucial and so while we are talking about multifocal erg because it is a pattern protocol patient should fixate towards the target properly then based on the rings that we have shown so whether those rings are well formed and we can analyze that ratio also based on the ring ratio now the scale whether that appears to be reliable or not that that y x axis that shows that implicit time and y axis that shows the amplitude whether that is reliable or not so that reliability parameters can be evaluated based on the other parameters like noise level uh, uh, fixation level whether that is moving or not and based on that if we convert it to the nanovolts and magnify the uh, that uh, waveforms so we can directly see whether that is reliable or not and stimulus calibration should be done within 3 months if not then 6 months now it is the demographic that consists of that uh, patient's age gender and date of the test and simultaneously why it was aimed for so usually we have a process that why that test was aimed for we should also mention that it was initially meant for toxic macular in the right eye again we should also include the base corrected visual acuity in both the eyes and we should also mention the current uh, refractive correction now here what what is important that uh, other parameters like whether people is dilated if that people is dilated then how much pupillary dilation is the diameter that has to be also mentioned and then during the test whether patient fixate uh, uh, maintain the steadiness or fixating toward the target properly or not that is that that patient complains to be that should be mentioned too and simultaneously the date last date of calibration what test protocol we have chosen whether the impedance level was accepted or not how many numbers of hexagons we have used generally we use 61 and 91 and even more number of hexagons can also be used the amount means the idea the propagation of hexagons that i told uh, shown in the previous talk 
but number of hexagons that that how much scale that how much degree that is covering up these all should come in general now i have clubbed up this uh, initial and the uh, and the last slide so that over, that is the overall format of the checklist that is that is formulated here so starting from the date and up to the impedance level and the number of hexagons being used now this is the normative data so that is from the the initial slide that i have shown you that that is the normative data based on that in particular degree or means particular ring area how much is the normal n1 p1 n2 amplitude and how much is the n1 p1 n2 implicit time respectively these all are noted now next question is discuss the key steps of, for patient and instrument preparation for the mfrt test which was i really explained in the previous uh, slide so the dilation of the people and size of the people and the electrode placement and the impedance level so these all to be uh, should come at the end of the test whether these all were checked before we initiated the test or during the test whether these all were maintained or not and as i told in the, in the previous talk also that fixation and steadiness for multifocal erg is important because it is a pattern program now at the end how do we report a multifocal uh, a test result now why based on the icep reporting that consists of a n1 p1 and n2 that is known now what is the what are the parameters of this n1 p1 n2 that we should that the shape of the waveform that i told that shape of the waveform is important that we should always look for the whether the shape of the waveform is maintained then we should measure the amplitude and implicit time ideally machine itself calculates the amplitude and impl implicit time but we can also discourage if it is not if it if it is uh, uh, it is not calculated properly then we should also focus on that whether that is calculated uh, uh, calculated in a well mannered program or not now we should also compare that uh, the, the data what we have extracted from a patient with the normative age mass normative data now at the end we should not or we must not diagnose just based on a multifocal electroretinogram now this is just a brief look of our normal multifocal electroretinogram that i showed before this is the overall look of the average response uh, uh, and the amplitude and the noise level and the n1 p1 n2 amplitudes on particular degree or the particular ring area now it was a case that is the case now we have seen that uh, how much it should be the, the, the uh, because we have a normative data we know that whether the people was dilated or not ancillary parameters of the level of noise impedance level whether fixation was maintained or not these all are known now now while we are summarizing that based on that normative data we have to put the values of the patient now those values of the patient we can easily compare whether that is within normal range or outside normal range now at the end while we are reporting based on the normative data at the end we should also report it how it was now same same thing whether the signal quality was accepted or not how was the patient complaints during the test and whether should we recommend the test to be repeated or not then we should comment uh, a person who is performing the test should comment how was the test result so test result does not include the diagnosis test result includes only the n1 p1 amplitude and implicit time whether that is within normal range or outside normal range so in our case that is outside normal range and how much area that is covering that sheet that is also coming up and implicit time uh, is overall uh, overall implicit time was within normal range now that is the end of that so that at the end that case was diagnosed to have a toxic maculopathy in the right eye but again keeping in mind just based on mfrg it is not uh, good enough to diagnose because that that test result uh, related the uh, uh, oct and the fundus fundus findings too now i will show you a particular uh, uh, mfrg here the first uh, low signal to noise ratio how that is that gives a uh, an impact that i have already highlighted now in this slide what we are seeing uh, we are seeing that waveform shape of the waveform that within means that is maintained that is well preserved shape of the waveform what is different here is if we look at this side and look at this side you can find some change what change you see at your left that waveform height of the waveforms are pretty high 
and at your right that height of the waveform are pretty less that is not comparable so and if you look at this pretty carefully this like this height is almost preserved in particular region and as you are going towards your right that you see that height of the amplitude is coming down and at this corner you can see that minimum amount of wave amplitude that basically happens while a patient is giving a target but patient uh, despite of giving that target patient is not focusing towards the target focusing some area eccentrically and that is leading that waveform to appear like this this is uh, and keeping in mind that noise level and the trace um, eye, eyeball movement trace um, uh, graphs is also within normal range that is also acceptable so it is no longer this this is this is known as this is this is particularly known as sloping effect so that is a kind of an artifact so with this uh, uh, i'm ending this session of the, my case if any question i'm uh, glad to answer thank you uh, thank you sujoy uh, there are a couple of questions that have already come up a uh, couple of them actually from uh, bharat one he asks what is the minimum visual acuity required for performing mfrg and a related question is what's the acceptable level of noise you just spoke about the noise levels and artifacts related to that so it's a uh, relevant question for you to answer yes so if i answer the second question at first because i have the slide now so accepted level level of noise as per the icf standards is 2 less than 2 microvolts so now while you look at the noise level simultaneously you should also look for the uh, eyeball movements so that also can be interrelated that movement of eyes can also lead to noise level because of the you have put a contact lens electrode while performing the erg and the, because of the friction between the contact lens and the cornea can also lead to increased amount of noise so the accepted level of noise is less than 2 microvolts so while machine is performing the test if it is more than 2 that will highlight as red now answering the qu first question the uh, visual acuity there is no particular uh, guideline that visual acuity should be present even but the uh, th theory is even though the patient is having a poor visual acuity or cannot able to see the target properly if the patient maintains the proper steadiness we can perform the test but ideally if patient cannot able to see usually patient uh, does a lot of eye movement but if the patient keeps the steadiness properly then we can also run the test Okay. thanks sujoy uh, it's sort of a rele uh, related question in the case of an artifact what can we do asks rajat okay so if case if there is a case of an artifact ideally we should not rely on the test we must look for the uh, we must find the relevant cause of that artifact if it is known then we have to see that multiple options that are multiple parameters to check for an artifact whether that is electrode induced whether patient does not understand it properly whether patient is not using uh, if it is not if it is grounding if not using the uh, sandals or shoes that can also lead to an artifact so and the area where we are performing the test so if it is known then better we redo the test once more and if it is blink induced then again we have to uh, make sure that patient should not have to blink during the test or or during the test time yeah Uh, this this probably is again related to your previous answer uh, sujoy um is there normative values are they irrespective of ethnicity i think this question is coming up multiple times so maybe if you and uh, richa can sort of combinedly answer this in terms of how, what does these normative values for ergs uh, really mean okay uh, dr richa uh, will you take this up yeah. no no go ahead sujoy okay so so normative data we must have irrespective of the laboratory what we have so each and every laboratory should have its own normative data because there are ans uh, ex uh, uh, ancillary parameters that can also lead to uh, reduce the amplitude or increase amount of noise so what are those where the machine is set up and with how the uh, ancillary uh, environment is if there are some other instruments just adjacent to the erg laboratory that can also induce some amount of noise so it, it based on the ethnicity yes we do, should have a normative data and normative data should also be for decades let's say 
if we are comparing a normative if we have a patient of 35 year old we must have to have a normative data uh, of the age of 31 till 40 we should not compare that uh, normative uh, we should not uh, compare that data with a patient uh, with a normative well, uh, population who uh, the age uh, between the age group of 50 to 60 so we should have our uh, uh, each laboratory must have its own normative data at least to compare the uh, scenario Dr. Richa, anything you want to add? No, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Is anyone is, yeah. No, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I was just going to go, go to the next question, sir. Uh, so if there is anything you want to add, Richa, please go ahead. No, no, I'm good. Okay. There is a series of questions, uh, Sujoy, about uh, usage of MFERG in patients with glaucoma, malingering, and uh, uh, nystagmus. So, uh, do you think? Do you, what's your thoughts on whether they can be used at all, and what and what would it give you? In in uh, uh, in nystagmus, I can take that up, but in glaucoma, I can. Uh, uh, it is a little disease based, so I will uh, 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 wait for. Refer it to tapas. Yeah. Yes. So, but in uh, nystagmus and another one, what that was? Uh, uh, nystagmus and malingering. Malingering. So yeah. usually in case of malingering, we do not perform multifocal ERG. So we refer for visual evoke potential. But in nystagmus, ideally a test report may not be reliable because of the abruptly eye movement. But what basically happens, we have few cases on nystagmus. We must check for the null point. So if that null point is little, uh, if, if that uh, null point reducing the uh, amount of eye movement, so we can go for the test. Even though we can do, must not have the proper shape that what we have shown here, but still we can at least screen that how the waveform can be, or or we can at least screen the test patient. So this was this should be the particular waveform in a normal patient while patient is fixating or steadily uh, targeting towards the uh, point which is given by the GANS field. But in nystagmus case, so uh, in that time, this particular shape may not be well maintained in, in a topographic shape, but at least we can assess that what that would be. And we can correlate with other eyes also. So, uh, yes. Shrikant just wanted yeah. to... Yeah, 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 yeah Richa and then Tapas, please. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, for anything with glaucoma, you want to assess ganglion. So we did not speak in this particular CPD, but pattern EIG would be your choice or photopic negative response. Those are the two tests which you often use to for ganglion cell assessment. Dr. Tapas, please go ahead. Uh, so um, this uh, you know, multiple ERG is uh, a lot dependent on, on the patient's for cooperation. So if you don't have cooperation, then the recording will be meaningless. So in that way, nystagmus, you won't uh, get adequate uh, information on that i would not advise multifocal erg uh, for the nystagmus the second is um, for malingerers so again malingerers will deliberately uh, move away from the point of fixation because they are going to feign that i am not able to see so then the responses will be bizarre only uh, mm -hmm. so again we have other better um, test for the malingerers so i would take uh, the pattern onset offset or pattern reversal VP over multiple ERG for malingers. So I agree with whatever uh, Dr. Krisha said for glaucoma, we are uh, looking at the ganglion cells. So multiple ERG is a cone driven uh, response. So yes, pattern ERG and photopic negative, uh, negative response can give better idea than this. Thank you. Uh, that was one last question again from Valencia. Uh, what electrode do you prefer for MFERG? So, Jai, cornea or non-cornea? Does that affect the results? Yes, we do prefer a corneal electrode like a Burian Allen or Jet electrode because it confirms about the corneal surface. And patient may not have uh, uh, and at the during the test, patient may not have a noise increased amount of noise level. On the other hand, if a non-corneal electrode is being used like a DTL or Zeri, that may induce a little amount of noise. So the waveform may be may con constitute of some amount of noise. So in that case, multifocal electroheterogram, it is preferred to use the contact lens electrode or the corneal electrode rather than a uh, skin or uh, non-corneal electrode. Perfect. Thank you, uh, Sujoy.